Less than a week to go now before their first guests return to Disneyland. And with that, we've got a few updates that might be useful for those going back to Disneyland. Today, we've got some news on verifying California residency, uh, some rumors on Disney's plans for opening day, or actually the opening weeks, confirmation on plans for Rise of the Resistance and boarding parties, plus updates on opening day and an annual pass holder preview for Knott's Berry Farm. So stick around to find out more about all of this next on Fresh Baked. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fresh Bake. As I record this on a Sunday morning, it is just six more days until the first guests return to Disneyland. But there are still some questions, some unknowns. This morning, though, we do have a little bit more information, a little bit more light has been shed on the question of how Disneyland, or how Disney is going to be verifying California residency, specifically those residents who maybe don't have a California ID. I asked Disney this question in the chat feature on the Disneyland app, and I was told that in lieu of a California ID, Disney said that any documentation that has your name and your California address will work as proof. So let's say, for example, you moved here recently from out of state, uh, but you don't yet have a California ID, but you're a resident. You've got, let's say, a utility bill. That'll work. Provided, of course, <laughs> it has your name on the utility belt. Your name has to match the name on the ticket. Now, I know that's not everything. It still doesn't answer the question of whether or not Disney's even going to be checking IDs at the gate. They haven't said, this isn't something that they have not committed on, commented on at all, other than to say the answer is still up in the air. They're not sure. But one could take this answer as confirmation that they would be checking. Because if I had asked, are utility bills sufficient to prove residency in California, if they were not checking IDs, the answer would have been, no, don't worry about it. We're not checking IDs at the gate. We're not going to verify residency. But they, they did say, they did say, no, utility bill is good, which suggests that they might be checking IDs. But neither is that a true thing before we jump to any conclusions. Uh, it is my perception that obviously Disney and all the other theme parks are trying to do and say the right things in so much as they're, they're saying you have to be a California resident. But what they're doing doesn't necessarily support that. We already seen, for example, that Magic Mountain is not checking IDs. My ID was not checked at Universal Studios. And I think it's because they would just rather not. I mean, and not because they don't believe in the rule uh, because, or because they want to let everybody in, but because there's a lot of legitimate reasons why somebody may not be able to evidence that they're a California resident. We've talked about this ad nauseum, so everybody's aware of that situation. Now, I did follow up with Disney on that issue of whether or not they were going to be checking IDs. And here's what they said. They may be checking IDs as you enter the parks. So still, six days to go, and we still don't have any sort of definitive position by Disney, which tells me it's probably not gonna be a big deal when you get to the gate. Just like Magic Mountain, just like Universal. Sometimes they check, sometimes they don't. It's not like a firm 100% situation. Okay, once you get inside, there are a few operational issues that have come up, some rumors about what Disney's plans are for the opening days, opening weeks of, of Disneyland. It was reported last week that Disney had planned to open up the parking structure, the Mickey and Friends parking structure at 6 a.m. Now that's pretty early for Disney because normally they don't open it up for an hour uh, before the park, was it two hours? Two hours before the parks open. This is three hours before the parks open. Uh, parks are supposed to open at nine. Now, my assumption is that they are expecting a lot of people to be showing up bright and early at the Making Friends parking structure waiting to get in. And rather than seeing a big lineup of cars outside, you know, lining up all the way down Ball Road or something like that, they're just gonna relieve the pressure and let everybody in. We already seen this in action, Touch of Disney. They opened that, <laughs> Touch of Disney, they didn't open the parking structure until a half an hour before the start date or the start time. Uh, so there was a huge lineup. So I think that they're just trying to relieve that pressure off of Ball Road and you know Disneyland Drive. But having said that, the rumor that I'm hearing is that maybe as early as 5.30 a.m. Now I say this pretty much for informational reasons only because there really is no benefit to getting at the park at 5.30. There's, it's not first come, first serve. There's, you know, it's by reservation only. There's no you know, tickets being sold at the gates. Uh, it's not first come, first serve, so you're not beating anybody to the, to the gate by getting there at 530. You're not, there's no advantage uh, for, the, for that. So do think about maybe not being in such a rush and, and sort of taking your time. I mean, get there when you want to get there, but 
you don't have to camp out. You don't have to be there at two or three in the morning and line up outside the gate. It's just not necessary. But having said that, there is another rumor. There is a rumor that Disney may choose to open up the gates before 9 a.m. And again, for the same reason that they might open up the parking structure before 6 a.m. or before 8, 7 a.m. And that's because they are afraid, they don't want the worry is that there might be a bunch of people waiting outside the front gates to get in, camping out, getting there two, three, four, five, six in the morning, who knows. And if, a, if the size of the, of the group it gets big enough, they might just let the gates open and let everybody in so that you don't get this huge mess. The longer that they require people to wait out front, the bigger the crowd will get. So to remove that pressure, they might just open the gates. No rope drop, no fanfare, no little show out in front of the train station or anything like that. The gates open, you go through the turnstile, you walk down Main Street, and you head to Space Mountain, start your day. And there is precedent for this, by the way. Uh, if you've been paying attention to how things went at Walt Disney World, they had a very similar situation. If the crowds amassed out in front of the gates, they open things up and just let people in. So <laughs> let me backtrack on my previous statement. There may be good reason to perhaps show up at the parking structure at 5.30 in the morning, because if, you, if enough people do that, enough people show up at 5.30, 6 a.m., they might just open the gates and you've got yourself an hour or two of extra time at Disneyland. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? By the way, I say all of this with a huge might. Uh, this is rumor, nothing's been stated as fact. Disney would never go public with, with something like this. They would never say, hey, we're opening at nine, but you know, <laughs> make it seven. They're never gonna say that publicly. This is just rumor and speculation. Do what you like. And it is true, still. Show up at eight o'clock, show up at nine o'clock. You're not gonna have any trouble any delay in getting to the park uh, or getting inside the gate. It's gonna be easy peasy. Reservations only, limited capacity. Okay, once you're in, there are still a few more unknowns. Uh, I recommend watching our video on which attractions, which restaurants, which shops are going to be open and or closed when the park opens on 4.30, check that out. In the meantime, we have confirmed one thing and that is with regard to Rise of the Resistance and boarding passes. Uh, it's we, we already knew that they were gonna be doing boarding passes again this year, uh, just like they did, or I, when the parks reopened, just like they did before the parks closed. It was only, got two months, guys. That was it, there was two months of Rise of the Resistance. And those, man, that boarding party situation, you, you know, it starts at 8 a.m., the bell goes off, and everybody tries to get a boarding pass. That situation was one of the most memorable experiences, for good or bad, I don't know, however you wanna define it, because for me, it was just watching the energy of the crowd and being excited. I got a lot of happiness out of seeing people happy to get the Rise of the Resistance Pass. Obviously, some people didn't get one, and it wasn't such a great morning. But either way, it was one of the most interesting, memorable things that I can ever remember doing at Disneyland. Having said that, I like to say that a lot, don't I? Having said that, we get to do it again uh, when the parks reopen on April 30th. In fact, we're going to get to do it twice. There's going to be two uh, distributions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, instead of doing the whole thing, they're going to do probably half or a little bit more than half in the morning, and then the rest are going to be done in the afternoon. And of course, the reason for this is to give people a chance, people who perhaps couldn't get to the park at 8 a.m. or whenever the parks first open, perhaps they didn't get there till noon, they are obviously out of luck. Uh, the only chance anybody had was to be there at 8 a.m. on the dot. Uh, so it's to give late arrivers a chance to ride Rise the Resistance, which I, I mean, that's good policy. I, I, it's fair. Now the first distribution though will not be at 9 a.m. when the park opens, but at 7 a.m. well before the park opens. So that means you get to join uh, or, or try to get a boarding pass. You don't even have to be in the park. Uh, but it does require, the app will require you to have a ticket and a reservation for that day. So there's no, I, I don't know why anybody would try to get one without it, but just, you know, <laughs> I guess it bears uh, saying here at this point, you have to have a ticket and a reservation before you can join uh, a boarding party, but that'll be at 7 a.m. So you can do that in the Esplanade, in the parking lot, in the comfort of your own home, if you wish. One other thing, if you wanna get that 7 a.m. spot, your ticket has to start at Disneyland, meaning, let's say you have a park hopper, uh, uh, but your park hopper is for, it's a start at DCA. You can't get the 7 a.m. ticket. Uh, if you're starting at DCA, you can only get the afternoon ticket. So if you want that 7 a.m. slot, either you have to have an all-day ticket, a single park ticket for Disneyland, or, a park hopper that starts uh, at Disneyland. Which brings us to the noon distribution. That'll happen at noon. Anybody can get the noon distribution. Uh, if, you are, if you are one of those who have a park hopper that starts at DCA, that's the one you have to get it. Uh, it'll start at noon and then you can 
park hop at 1 p.m. and hopefully ride Rise of the Resistance, uh, assuming you get a pass. And on that, best of luck to all of you. Uh, I am sure that Rise of the Resistance boarding passes are going to be equally as competitive on the 30th as they were before the parks closed, which was ultra competitive. So uh, <laughs> may the odds be in your favor. <laughs> uh, now do stay tuned to Fresh Baked uh, for more you know, information on these issues, plus anything else that develops. We're paying attention very closely to the operational side of things uh, to see what's happening. And we're gonna be paying attention to that when we get into the park. So stay tuned to Fresh Baked if you wanna be prepared for how to visit Disneyland in this you know, post uh, re reopening era. This I don't want to call it post COVID because it's still a thing, but you know the reopening era. It'll be different, and you want to uh, pay attention to Fresh Bake. Subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications so you know what to expect when it's your turn to go to Disneyland. Now, having said that, we're not done yet. We got a little bit more news for you. Knott's Berry Farm has joined the chorus of parks that are reopening. They're going to reopen fully to guests on May 21st. Tickets will go on sale on April 26th for general uh, admission. Uh, that, tickets and reservations on the same day, April 26th, but you can also book your reservation for your annual pass on that day, and you can book your reservation for an annual pass holder preview. Yes, Knott's Berry Farm is doing an AP preview, something that Disneyland chose not to do. Uh, uh, so they're going to be doing it, not just for a couple of days either. Knott's Berry Farm is going to be having their AP preview for a full two weeks. Uh, we're going to do our very best. We bought an annual pass for not, so we're going to do our very best to uh, get a reservation for that May 6th opening date. Maybe another one after that, who knows? And for what it's worth, they did say in their announcement that uh, Knott's Berry Farm is open only to California residents. <laughs> we'll be paying attention as well to how they handle that, if at all. My expectation, again, is to be just like Magic Mountain and Universal. Probably not very much. And that's it. That's our update for today. Stay tuned, as I mentioned, to Fresh Bake for more information as it develops. By the time you watch this, uh, we'll, be, we'll just be days away from the cast member previews, uh, and there's going to be lots of new developments coming up from that as well. Uh, follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked and on Twitter at First Baked Disney. That's fresh with no E. Uh, and otherwise, be safe out there, everybody. Uh, be kind to one another. And fresh Baked. Oh, the hat. Oh, it was so close. It was right there.